So I'm guessing you saw the thumbnail or read the title of this video, but if not, Today we're going to be building cedar picket planters with really simple tools, by the way. And one of those simple tools is the miter saw. So I'm going to be using it to square up the end of these pickets and then also using a stop lock on the end to make 16 inch cuts for all of the inside parts of my planters. Here's that stop lock that I was talking about. It's literally just a piece of wood that I've clamped to my work surface and then also clamp my miter saw down so that I get a repeatable cut every single time really easy to use i suggest you use one with all of the cuts made on the miter saw i was able to dump the dust off because i didn't hook up dust collection and the reason why was my dust collector was full and i was just too lazy to empty it you know sometimes it'd be like that and with all of it swept off of my table into the trash can i could then move over to the table saw so I'm just going to rip a bunch of these pickets down to size about two inches and those are going to be my legs. So you can see here I'm just squaring up my fence, getting that measurement out to two inches, getting it lined up and we're going to make some cuts. And I got to apologize. I don't know what happened to my phone. I started to record and it just had some issues with the table saw running. So we're just going to pretend like that didn't happen and we're just going to move on. So moving on, you can see I've already got one of my leg pieces together there, and it is just a simple L leg. Two of those pieces that I ripped on the table saw glued together, and I'm using tight bonds quick and thick because, I don't know, I seem to really like that glue a lot. It, it sets up quick, it holds together easy, and it doesn't require a whole lot of clamping time, and I'm not even gonna use clamps on this. As you can see, I'm using a brad nail, to hold these pieces together while the glue dries. And that's really all you need. I think I'm using an inch and a half uh, brad nails here. So once I get them nailed, then I'll just wipe off the excess glue, make sure everything is nice and squared up. And now I've got four legs for one side. Well, actually that's all four sides, but anyways, I'm gonna use two of these legs, more glue, and then those center sections that I cut out of the pickets earlier will go right in the middle. And again, I'm just going to glue and brad nail them together. I guess you could use just glue if you wanted to, but the brad nails will hold as the glue sets and you'll never see these brad nails because I think I was shooting one inch brad nails here, so they're not gonna go through on the other side. Now, as I was adding the second piece of the side, I noticed that I wanted to get an even spacing. So I went and grabbed some handy shims and these are 1 8 inch handy shims. I really, really love these shims. And I just continued to use them all the way down on one side until it was all glued and brad nailed. And there we go, that's one side of my planter. So rinse and repeat. I now have two sides, but we've got to put more of those center sections together on the legs to make all four sides. So what do you know? Glue and brad nail. That's all it really takes. Really simple tools. So far, I've only used a miter saw, table saw, glue, and a brad nail. But I guess glue isn't really a tool. It's more of a consumable, but anyways, you're gonna need it for this project. So now with all three of those sides together, it's time to add the fourth and final side. And don't worry, I saved you from watching me brad nail all of the pickets but that's the last one going in. And then here is the pretty much completed cedar picket planter. All four sides being even and equal spacing between all those pickets. And it's looking pretty, pretty good. One thing I needed to do real quick was grab the measurement of the pot I'm gonna be using and then transfer that height over to the inside of the planter so I can add a cleat which I'm doing here, and it's just a piece of scrap plywood I had laying around. I'm gonna glue it and then also brad nail it to the inside of the planter. Now you could use cedar here instead of the plywood, and I probably should have, except I didn't rip enough pieces of the cedar, and I already had this plywood sitting around, so I thought, eh, why not? Let's just use this. I also used some scrap plywood I had sitting around to be the base that will hold the pot 
up into the planter so that it's not sunk down too far and it's a perfect fit. So now we're moving on to the top of the planter and we're gonna trim it out. So I'm just using glue around the top and then I'm going to place all of my pieces around the top side and I'm being careful to make sure the inside edge is flush with the inside of the planter box so that my pot can still slide down in perfectly. But I still have a decent edge over the outside of a planter so it has a nice decorative touch. And of course I'm using brad nails again here because why not? I mean, I've used them already so much. Why not just keep using them? Plus it works. All right, so then I took it outside and it was time to burn this thing. Now you may be thinking, this is Shoshugiban. Well, it's not. My good friend Tamar over at 3x3 Customs, which you can check out her channel up there in the top right corner, she was the first person I've ever seen bring to light the fact that Shoshugiban actually doesn't mean anything. It's a mistranslation of the word Yakasugi. Yakasugi directly translates to charred cypress or cedar, which is a traditional Japanese sighting. Somehow there was a mistranslation from Japanese to Chinese and the term Shoshugiban was born. And that word actually doesn't mean anything. So, what you are seeing here is really just charred cedar. Nothing more, nothing less. And I'm just using map gas to get that nice char on the cedar. And as you can see, before on the right and charred on the left. And then I'm gonna finish up the one that hasn't been done here on the right and get it matching to the charred on the left. And then take a wire brush to knock off all of that char and ash and it'll leave that nice texture. And if you look at the base of that planter, you'll see how much of that char just starts accumulating as I swipe that wire brush across that cedar. It got really, really dirty, really fast. I probably should have been wearing a respirator because it was pretty, pretty nasty. But after I was able to run that wire brush over everything, the texture on this cedar was really, really cool, but it left behind so much dust. So I grabbed a blower and tried to clean up as much as I could of all of that residue and then brought it inside to India ink it because that rustic brown char, it just wasn't doing it for me. I wanted it to be black but I really love the texture. And you see here, I'm using India ink with a foam brush, which is my go-to method for applying India ink. But as you see, I'm having to dab a whole lot. And I don't mean that thing that millennials used to do a couple years back, but as you can see, I switched over to a really cheap chip brush and that seemed to work a lot better for me. I could get that India ink into all of those pores and, and grooves and, whatever you want to call it of that charred cedar and here we are all india inked up and i really love how these things turned out so i brought them out to the front porch put them side by side and loaded them up with a couple of boxwoods that i'll eventually shape once i get a little bit bigger but everything is looking good out there my curb appeal has gone up and i am really loving these planters and the simplicity of them is even better so go out there Make your own planners, and I'll see you in the next one.